Trek has just unveiled the all new 2024 Slash and I'm here to keep you up to date with some pretty big changes to Trek's flagship enduro bike. Before I deep dive though, here's the headlines. The new bike bumps out more rear wheel travel and comes with mixed wheel size as standard. Not only that, but not wanting to miss out on the latest tech trends, it has a new high pivot and chain idler suspension design. The Slash has been an ever presence in Trex range since the first generation launched way back in 2012 and it can trace its roots back even further to the scratch that launched in the late noughties. In that time, it's been Trex's big travel enduro bike designed for crushing the competition between the tapes. We've literally just got the bike delivered and the team and myself have been checking it out this morning. Expert tester Luke has already ridden the bike on a sneak peek in Whistler. Keep watching to hear his initial ride impressions later. Before I talk more about the suspension design updates, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on the latest mountain bike tech news. Trek aims to make the bike more capable than other bike park rippers and anyone wanting to push their limits can hit the trail hard. Being an enduro bike though, one eye needed to be kept on the ride back to the top. To do this, Trek has revised the Slash's geometry and suspension design, taking cues from other bikes in its range. Yes, we can hear the calls of looks like a session from here. The latest version of Trek's race winning downhill rig has featured the telltale idler wheel since 2021, so the brand is no stranger to a high pivot bike. It even featured one on the original Session 10 way back in 2006 and the diesel even before that. So Trek has been playing around with high pivot designs for years and with the latest Slash, it went through multiple iterations to learn how to best implement the design. The new high pivot Slash dishes out 170 millimeters of rear wheel travel and this is where we're going to get a little nerdy so bear with me. The high pivot delivers a rearward axle path, allowing the wheel to move backwards and up in line with the bump force. It also means the rear center or chainstay length increases as the bike goes through the sag point and into its travel. The maximum rear center growth is approximately 80 millimeters rearward at 135 millimeters of travel before the axle path arcs forwards and upwards again for the last 40 millimeters of travel. At 30% sag, the chainstays are approximately 11 millimeters longer than the static geometry chart states. The aim of this axle path is for the suspension to not get hung up on square edge hits. In doing so, the bike and rider are able to better maintain momentum on the roughest trails. The downside of a high pivot is that the excessive chain growth creates a phenomenon known as pedal kickback. This is where the upper part of the chain pulls against the pedals as the suspension compresses. To control this, an idler wheel is included to help mitigate kickback. Its position has been carefully calculated to keep as much pedal efficiency as possible by allowing Trek to fine tune the anti-squat. This is the force that helps keep the suspension stable when pedaling. Trek claims this remains above 100% through its whole travel. In theory, this should mean the bike will still pedal well despite its bump gobbling suspension performance. The oversized 19 tooth upper idler also helps reduce drivetrain friction, a potential negative that comes courtesy of the high pivot design. The lower idler, built in collaboration with MRP, mitigates chain growth below the chainstay. This stops the suspension, causing the chain to pull on the MET's cage to improve suspension performance. It also aims to improve drivetrain smoothness. If you need to replace the chain, the new design uses one standard 126 link chain in all sizes except extra large, which use a 128 link chain. Yes, you will likely have to buy two chains if you need to replace the chain on your extra large slash. While the suspension layout is new, Trek has retained its proven ABP or active braking pivot at the chainstay seat stay junction. This rotates concentrically around the rear axle and keeps the Slash as a single pivot linkage driven shock platform. As with some other bikes, the Slash's leverage rate and thus the level of progression in the suspension can also be changed. This is done with a flip chip on the lower shock mount. This changed it between 20 and 25%, making it harder to compress the suspension in the latter. It's not just the suspension that has been overhauled though. The frame's geometry has seen updates to bring it up to speed with its rivals. The big news here is yes, the bike is slacker, but the reach isn't too much longer, coming within a millimeter or so of the old bike. This sees a size large get a 488 millimeter reach. Are we seeing bikes reach numbers finally plateauing? Let us know what you think in the comments. 
The other standout news is like the on-trend high pivot and idler suspension, the new Slash also moves to a mixed wheel mullet setup. Sizes medium through extra large use the mixed 29 and 27 5 inch setup. The size small sticks with small at 27.5 inch wheels front and rear. This is interesting as the older Slash in a size small used a full 29er setup front and rear. Don't worry if you want the full 29er effect on the new bike however. The medium to XL bikes can fit a 29 inch rear wheel which is a nice touch to have. It's not all that straightforward though as you need to purchase a different lower shock mount in order to accommodate that bigger rear wheel. This lowers the bottom bracket to make it compatible with the bigger wheel and maintain the bike's geometry. Moving on to the rest of the bike's geometry and the standout differences are the head tube angle is now a slacker 63.3 degrees as stock with mixed wheels and 170mm fork. Trek has also introduced a plus or minus one degree headset cup that can be fitted to the head tube. This allows the rider to tailor the front end geometry to suit their preferences. Like the shock mount though, these again are available aftermarket and are not included with the bike. There is also a steeper effective seat tube at around 77 degrees to help set riders centrally when pedaling. It's not the steepest around, but still an improvement on the older bike. Trek has built in proportional chainstay lengths as the frame sizes increase. These range from 429mm on sizes small and medium, through to 434mm on medium large and large, and 439mm on the extra large. While these seem very short, remember that the rear centre length will grow 11mm at sag, even though these should still give the bike agile handling. These values are for how the bike is sold, so if you fit a 29 inch rear wheel or change the headset cups, the geometry will change from the numbers stated. To accommodate longer dropper posts, the seat tubes are shorter starting at 390mm on the size small and topping out at 470 on the extra large. What's even better is that the seat tube is now straighter. This means the size small can fit a 170mm dropper post and the medium and larger bikes can fit a 200mm or longer dropper post with ease. Now you'll really be able to get the saddle out of the way on the descents. While there is plenty new with the latest Slash, Trek has kept its OCLV or Optimum Compaction Low Void Carbon Fiber. This construction aims to increase the carbon strength and impact resistance. However, Trek has added integrated carbon armor. This is an additional film that lies below the paintwork to give extra protection to the carbon fibers. Carbon skeptics can rest easy though, as the all new Slash is still available in aluminium as well as carbon. The aluminium models use Trek's Alpha Platinum Aluminium, which uses their highest grade of aluminium construction. There are also replaceable fenders under the down tube to fend off rocks and impacts. One is at the bottom bracket and the other offers protection against pickup truck tailgates. To help keep the bike silent, Trek has designed a new rear chainstay protector. The shape is claimed to prevent chain whip and minimize both vertical and lateral chain movement leading to less noise. It's always nice to see a brand offer this level of protection on a bike, even if it's not the most sightly on the shop floor. To the pleasure of many, Trek hasn't used internal headset routing, but there are new internal cable guides to help make installation and replacement easier. Trek calls these guides channels and they also allow better use of the Slash's integrated frame storage. Not only is the internal storage better utilized than before, it also gets a new hatch with a bigger opening to help stash larger items. To make access even easier, there's a new more reachable lever which should make opening the compartment a lot simpler. Trek has also used recycled plastic for parts of the internal frame storage, so it's keeping an eye on the environment as well. The bike thankfully uses common standards in most places, including boost 12 by 148 mm rear hub spacing, a threaded bottom bracket shell, and the ever more common 55 mm boost chain line. Out back, there's a 200 mm post mount rear brake mount, and you can fit up to a 220 mm rotor. We've covered the overall range features, so let's go over the range of bikes itself. There are seven new models being released with two aluminium bikes and five carbon framed offerings. The base level Slash 8 costs £4,250 or $4,399 while the range topping 9.9 XX Axis T-Type will set you back an eye-watering £11,750 or $11,499. 
The lovely bike we have here is the penultimate model in the range, the 9.9 XO Access T-Type, costing £9,400 or $9,399. This gets you the gorgeous OCLV carbon frame, ultimate level rock shock suspension and Bontrager carbon wheels and nice integrated bar and stem combo. If you want to start with a blank canvas, there is an option of an aluminium or carbon frame set available. Both have RockShox Vivid shocks, but at this time we don't have pricing information. Our technical writer Luke Marshall has been riding the new Slash in Whistler's iconic bike park and has now been tasked with reviewing the bike longer term. Luke, how does the bike feel from your initial rides on the launch and back here in good old Blighty? Uh, yeah, so I had one afternoon on the bike in Whistler, uh, a bit of a pedal outside the bike park and I managed a couple of laps at Creekside as well um, and had a quick blast around my local testing tracks uh, this morning. And the bike is surprisingly agile, surprisingly nimble, considering its stats on paper, you think it would be very, de well, demanding on the climbs. Yeah, a bit of a but plow it, bike and yeah, a bit of a winch and plummet kind of thing. Indeed, but Trek have actually been really impressive with how they've uh, got this high pivot idler bike to pedal. Um, so it, it climbs much lighter than it feels and it rides lighter than you might expect as well. Yeah. Excellent. So you've ridden the old bike as well. Have you noticed a massive difference going from the old suspension design to the new high pivot and idler? Both are very supple, but I'd say this one ekes out more traction. I think it's a bit more planted on the trail. Obviously the high pivot um, just helps that kind of hunker down a little bit and it's got a bit more grip and you can kind of just, you can probably push it a little bit harder, uh, make a few more mistakes and it will kind of get you out of trouble a bit easier. Um, definitely a hard charging bike. Yeah, because the geometry is not that much different really, is it? Slightly like a head angle, but everything else is pretty Size -wise, similar. Size-wise, I think the biggest change is again, the seat post angle, or the effective seat tube angle. Yeah, lot steeper. Yeah, and, and the forks, but otherwise, overall, it's not too different. And uh, But yeah, I think you just get a bit more traction on this, and a bit more comfort. Excellent stuff. So you've also been riding the Da Vinci Chainsaw, which on paper is quite a similar bike, 170 millimeters of travel and the high pivot, but I guess they ride very differently on the trail. Uh, they do. Um, considering, this, like you say, the stats are almost identical for what they are, high pivot 170 bikes, their ride feel is very different. Um, the Trek is definitely more versatile, um, better for long enduro loops. Um, the Da Vinci is certainly much more of that plowing bike, that traditional high pivot feel. Uh, magic carpet ride, call it what you want. It is great in the bike park, great at plowing down the steepest, roughest trails. It's not going to be your friend on the way back up. Trek have managed to make this uh, a bit more versatile, a bit more easy going around the whole mountain. We'll have a longer term review of the new Slash coming to the channel, MBUK Magazine and BikeRadar.com soon. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when that edit goes live. And if you can't wait that long, then why not see which bike we picked as our Enduro Bike of the Year in this video.